Okay, hello everyone, Lewis here once again, and today I'm going to be doing a mod overview of a mod named Omni2, which was created by Berserker66. Uh, to be honest, it isn't really a mod, it's more a world generation tool, but I'm going to call it a mod anyway, just to keep things simple. Uh, a little overview of what exactly it is, like I said, it's a world generation tool, it can generate loads of awesome worlds, it's like really unique, nothing like the normal Troyer, so I highly recommend you do check it out, and I'm just going to be showing you guys the kind of things which you can do and how exactly you know you can use it and install it. Um, normally I would actually do the installation of a mod at the end of the video but since this is all controlled you know out of Troia it makes more sense to do it at the start so um, all these links will be in the description just as you know a little thing to say. So all you need to go do is go to this thread and there will be two different downloads. It will be download for 32-bit and download for 64-bit. Like it says here, if you're unsure, go for 32-bit. Um, I'd highly recommend you do download the 64-bit one if you do actually know what operating system, uh, what bit operating, what bit operating system you are using. But just to check if you did not know, um, on Windows 7, you can just go start, right-click on computer, and then click on properties, and it says right here, um, 64-bit for me. So just click on the 64-bit one, and then click on download in the top left, top right even. I don't know my left and right. Once it says click here and then just go to wherever you downloaded it and install it. It's really easy to install. Just a step by step thing. Create a desktop icon. Go for it. And it should install really super mega quick. Launch it. Go for it. Um, yes, yeah, so you'll see right here. It's probably a bit confusing if you've never used it before. Um, basically here, if you do actually have current worlds that exist, it'll kind of preview them in like an overall world thing. This would be like the top left of the world and then this would be like kind of a spawn area and here, hell will be down here and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, I don't have any worlds at the moment, so it's just got this. Um, I'm going to be going through all the li little settings, all the little menus, just if anyone's confused by them. So I might not know everything, but I think I know most of it. So theme setting is obviously just for the theme of actual, you know, the UI of it. It doesn't matter at all. Um, the thumbnail size is just this thumbnail, you know, the preview of a world. Will columns is how many columns there is, well, how many worlds there is per column. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Make backups, obviously just make backups of a world. For start, this is kind of like the launcher thing. You've got a few different things. You've got, um, um, in my case, I've got tconfig installed. So you can just click on start and tconfig or start and then try it, depending on whether you want to, you know, use a modded um, version of try or not. Open is, you know, just open up world. If you've, if you're not in like the general um, directory of the worlds, obviously you can open them manually through here, and then you can just open them magically like that as something I could open. Oh, it's a lovely picture, very nice picture. Um, yeah, okay. Visit. You got donate, Omni Tool, Troya Online, Troya Wiki. Depends on which one you want. For game launcher, GUI which I use. Uh, so plugins. There is actually plugins which I'm going to talk about those in a bit as well. I don't quite know what all these plugins use. Well what they do. If you don't know what they do, they probably no use to you. Obviously this one's a bit obvious. It's a tombstone counter. Don't know why I'd want to know that but it's totally useful. Um, yeah if you scroll down a bit you'll actually see, where is it? It's control F it because I'm an idiot. Contr plugins. Here it is. So if you click here on the original thread it'll bring you here but there'll also be a link in the description. So you can see it gives you a few different um, you know, plugins to download and install. Uh, they're all quite obvious, you know, NPC Renamer, Plant Grower, World Flooded, just makes it all flooded. They're all pretty obvious what exactly we do. So, you know, download them if you really do want to, but just depends on whatever you want. So, New World from Image is just, I don't even know to be honest. It's from an image. I don't even know. It's from, I mean, I've, I've not actually used it before, but I'm sure if you don't know what it does, it's probably no use to you. So, we'll close that. Um, dungeon Arena. So a Dungeon Arena is a Dungeon Arena. I'm going to be showing you guys um, some variations of the Dungeon Arena in just a second, but obviously it's a generator, there's a lot of different variables you can you know, mess around with. It's pretty cool. I've never actually used it before, so I don't know why I'm saying it's pretty cool. We can save this for name up here, you can change some of the stuff. It's all a bit obvious, just chests, iron per chest. Lighting, you know, how light it is or how many lights there is per thing. Uh, you can change the colour if you really want to. Room, chances, standard or cross corridor, so just like intersections and stuff. Um, flat world, it's a bit obvious, it's a flat world. You can just change for, you know, whatever you want the surface type to be. I might do, yeah, I'll do a short video on this, um, just one of the previews of flat world as well. A bit later in the video, but you can see it's all really obvious. It's tile type, just whatever the hell you want. And this one, this one's a main attraction, right? that's why I came to it last. Or at least in my opinion, you've got quite a few options when you go on this, and it's one which I'm most, you know, acquainted with. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah, the name is exactly the same as Dungeon Arena. It's just the name of what you know what you want to call a world. I'll just call mine like 
and I'll test. I'm not actually going to generate one right now, but I will, like I said, be showing you guys all the different things you can generate in, you know, a later part of the video. So these are pretty obvious. Small planetoids is just a small map, which is planetoids. Medium, medium map, which is planetoids. Large is mod, large map, which is planetoids. I'm not quite sure which size square is. I'd imagine it'd be medium, and um, but obviously you can't have like a small square. But a square planetoids is just a square planet, basically. It's as obvious as that. Um, and if you've got no idea what planetoids is, uh, you know, just wait. A second and you'll see it's pretty awesome and um, my convince you to actually play through because it's very cool and uh, very different to a normal try I guess large planetoids and Terra is obviously just for large planetoids around like um Terra Terra how would I explain Terra Terra is basically a massive sphere with biomes in it and it gets harder ish as you get in the center like there's like corruption caves and stuff on outside and as you get uh, further in it just makes it harder basically so in the middle is hell uh, on our side, like I said, it's corruption. It's pretty obvious. Square Terra is exactly the same as a Terra, but it's just a massive square instead of a massive circle. Um, we've got a few extras here. I do know what all of those do. So Sun, if you've got Sun on, it means you can actually see like there's um, kind of a surface level. I'll show you with and without Sun, with and without Atlantis and stuff like that. But basically, if you've got Sun on, then there's actually an actual surface, you know, where you can see the Sun in the backdrop. If you've got this unticked. Then you can't see anything. Everywhere's just dark, basically. So it depends on you know if you want to play like that. You could probably make a game mode around it. Atlantis just makes it completely flooded. So if you want it all flooded, you know, take it. If it's unticked, it'll just be unflooded. Merchant is obviously just to make sure that the NPC merchant is there at the start. Um, also, the old man is at the start in the middle as well, just so you can actually get access to Skeletron. Less loot is obviously just less loot. Hard mode is hard mode, obvious stuff. Um, mirror mode, I'll show you that, it's a bit obvious again, but it just mirrors the left side to the right side. Um, it's something which we'll actually use in our capture gem, which we did a while ago. So, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be showing you guys all the different generations and talking about them a bit. Although, there isn't really that much to talk about them, but hopefully I can convince you to try it out, basically. It is pretty awesome, like I said. I'd highly recommend you do play it. My personal preference would probably be, if you're going to do a playthrough of it, probably large planetoids, but... Like I said, I'm going to be showing you that. I'm only going to be showing you one of the planetoids. But anyway, I will be right back when I'm in game. I'll talk about what exactly I'm using and all that good stuff. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've worked out what um, From Image actually does. I was a bit confused about it before. Um, basically, it converts a image into a world in Terraria. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you guys a quick example. Um, so I've actually got a picture of a cat, which I think should be a perfect example of what exactly it does. So we've got users, Lewis, that's my name, desktop, oh god, this is horrible. <laughs> uh, where is it? We need to find cat. What's the cat? Uh, Cat.jpg. So we're going to make an, a world out of <laughs> this cat here, so we'll see what it does. And you can see this um, console, you can actually see what it does, so it is actually useful if you open this up while you're waiting for it to generate, so then you can see when the world's generated. So there we go, it's done. So I'll be right back when I'm in game with my beautiful little cat. Okay, so now I'm in game with my cat. Um, it, it probably doesn't look like a cat, but it in fact is a cat. I don't know what to say. It's a cat. Uh, I just died because it's lava there. Oh my god. I was Hellstone. It, it's a cat. It, it's a cat. In fact, I'm going to go and get myself... Oh no, let's see. You can kind of see the cattiness, can't you? See, this is its... um. I don't even know what it is. Is this its eye? It's a cat, okay. <laughs> That's the first one. But now onto actual world generations. I guess it's pretty useful if you want to do some um, some pixel art. But maybe with something that isn't a cat. It might work a bit better. Maybe something 2D like Mario. Why did I not just do Mario? That would be so much smarter. But anyway, I'll be right back with some world generation. Okay, so the first one which I'm going to be showing you guys is the Dungeon Arena. As you can see, it's pretty obvious what exactly it does. Uh, you can see some of the variables which I could kind of tinker with before, such as um, the actual number of items in the chest. I've just left it at 1. This is the default settings. It's pretty cool. Um, I guess if you just edited the map you know, a bit more, you could probably base a game mode around it. In fact, I know, I think Odyssey Games has made a video today, in fact. Um, Kind of based around this, you can see there's just random items in each chest. You can change what exactly is in each chest. You can change how many is in each chest, and stuff like that. Change the colours of the light. Change the intersections so they're not all you know exactly open and stuff like that. It's pretty basic, but it's awesome, and you could make some game mode around it, or you could just play it for fun. Um, some PvP with someone, even a one v one. You can see it is also low gravity. Um, obviously, if I just went a bit lower, I wouldn't be low gravity, but 
It's just a dungeon with lots of swag in it and it's got random stuff. I like it. Um, oh god, I just died. Rest in peace for me. So I'll be right back when I'm on the next one. And I'm going to be going through these one by one in the same order which I kind of shown you guys them at the start. So I think the next one should be the flat world. You know, it's going to be very surprising. What could a flat world possibly be? Okay, so this is literally the simplest flat world you are ever going to see. So all I've done here is I've set the surface type as grass and that's it. I've just generated like that. Um, I guess it's good for building. You could just use it for building if you just want to build something. Um, you know, copy and paste it so you can get some schematics out of it using T-Edit. And use it on a capture gem or something like that. But of course you can change the actual filler of the world. I'm just going to try it out with a surface type set as grass and the tile type set as, I guess, just dirt. So we'll just try out that and I'll be right back in a second with that magical world. So you can see I'm back and now I'm on a surface type grass with a tile type dirt. It's as simple as that. Um, again, you know, if you just want to build an underground city, maybe. This is really just for building. It's pretty simple. You can't really do it with anything else. I think you can do it with T-Edit, but I think this, um, it's just simpler to use, really. So if you do want to build something, this is probably the best way to get, you know, a flat surface instead of having to just flatten it out yourself. But it's pretty boring, but, I mean, it can be used for certain things. So now I'm going to move on to all of the different planetoids, which you can actually make using this awesome tool. Okay, so this is the first one which I'm going to be showing you guys. It's simply the large planetoid for a stock set. So you can see, I've left the merchant on, Mr. Merchant. Uh, no, where is he? There he is. Barney, hello Barney. Uh, we've got Berserker 66, he is the guide, and also the old man. Uh, we don't have, you know, the sun turned off, we don't have anything like that. Why the hell have I got a bunny? Get away, bunny. I'm just going to be showing you guys what exactly it's like, basically. So, um, if you've never saw it before, you're probably very, very confused. You can see in the middle of most of these planets, not necessarily all of them, we've just got randomised loot in them. So you can see in this one, we've got... Wow, that's pretty nice. Um, it looks like it's been updated since I last looked at it. That's a lot of nice stuff. I don't think it was quite as random as that before. So you can see it's got some really random stuff. It's uh, it's pretty fun to play. I mean, you know, if you play it on medium core, it's just a lot of fun. That's why we did a let's play on it, because it's just pretty random. It's fun. Gravitation potions are pretty good using planetoids. we should be showing you guys a few more. Of course, this isn't mirrored, so it's different on each side. Uh, you've got all different kind of planets. You can get sand planets, you can get liquid planets, you can get a wood planet like there in the top left. You get different types of chests, you can get the shadow chest, the gold chest, the normal chest, uh, a bin, and I think something else, I can't, can't remember what it is. You know, you see we've got some grab potions there, some dynamite. It's just pretty fun, I highly recommend, you know, if you do like to do, I don't know, YouTube videos, you can do a let's play on it, man. Let's play's are pretty cool, you can see that one's just got demon in the middle of it. Middle of it. Lots of them got loads of random stuff in them, we can have like, um, just loads of stuff, like hellstone. It's not like it's not normal hell down at the bottom, it's just hell. Um, you can see past this point it's very dark as well. Oh god. You can see this one is uh, an obsidian with a hellstone inside it, which is pretty awesome. You can get the corrupt planets, which have got like uh, corruption all over them. And I think some of them still got, yeah, some still got orbs in them. Uh, you can see this one's a, a blue mushroom farm, which is really awesome. In fact, I, I feel like playing it right now, you know? Um, yeah, this is the large planetoids. There's stock sense. There's a lot of things you can change. And I'm going to be showing you guys some of those in a second. You can see you can get bigger ones. Ones with spikes inside them. You can get dungeon balls. Um, there's too many, but I can't even tell you guys. Just play it for yourself and see what kind of awesome stuff you can get. So, I'm going to move on to the next thing, which I've totally forgot what it is. But I'm sure it's awesome. And there's also something in the middle of this, by the way. Okay, so I'm back and now I am on square planetoids. And you might be thinking, Lewis, who was on square? Yeah, you're right, we're not square. Um, I talked to Berserker a bit, and apparently I was dreadfully wrong. I thought it would just give you square planets, which I thought would be pretty cool. But apparently, all it does is it's just normal planetoids, but it's got the height and the um, width exactly the same. So it's just a square world, which is a bit weird. Um, I mean, I guess it, it probably helps if you do want to play something which you want to kind of limit the players, you know, how far they can go and stuff. But it's pretty simple, it's exactly the same. Nothing special about it, but if you do want to play one which is exactly the same width as height, then, you know, go for it. There you go. Got your magical generator. So it's not really anything of note yet. It's exactly the same. And you can see down here, I'm sure I'll find my first ever planet. Planet! Can't find a planet. And I do think it's medium as well. So you can see there's a dirt one. No, it's not dirt. What the hell is it? It's clay. Damn. Got bad eyes apparently, but there you go. Um, it's exactly the same, but slightly different. Magical. Okay, so this is the large planetoids with Terra. So you can see this thing in the middle. You might be thinking, that's rather flat. Is it a square? No, it isn't a f square. This is Pac-Man, by the way. Um, no, it isn't a square. It's actually Terra. It's a massive ball. It's so big that I literally can't tell you guys how big it is in the form of a video. It's very big. Just generate one, open and tear it, it's really big. It's got um, a lot of planetoids, there's planetoids everywhere, of course it's a large map, um, there's a planetoid which is kind of a planet, 
I'm gonna quickly find a planetoid just to show you guys, but it is planetoids along with Terra, so not only do you get the glory of Terra, which obviously, like I said, has biomes in it, it gets harder as you get in the middle, you know, it's like um, lava, biomes and stuff, it's pretty awesome, but also has the large planetoids, but apparently today, I can't actually find any planetoids at all, which is a bit of a disaster. No, I'm gonna find one very soon, I can tell. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep on waiting until I eventually find a planetoid. I'm pretty sure we'll find one one day. There we go. Okay, so found a planet. So this is not Terra, obviously. This is a large planetoid. So it's got all of, you know, I'm, I'm just going to disconnect and rejoin, actually. It's got all the awesomeness of the normal Terra, no, all the normal planetoids, you know, around the map. All the um, same size planetoids, exactly the same size, as far as I can tell. As a normal one, but it also has this massive Terra ball in the middle. I'm going to go through it quickly. So I'm going to show you guys a bit of it. I'm not going to, you know, ruin all the, the magical secrets. You can go try it out yourself. Um, you're gonna play with friends or play on your own. How you feel? It does have like chests and stuff with random loot in it. It's perhaps not as um, giving as planetoids, or maybe I was just me having bad luck. But when I played in it, for some reason I didn't really get that much good stuff. I guess it gets good better as you get in the middle. So you can see with sand there, there's a bit of wood here. Um, this might be a ball. Yeah, this is a ball right here. No, well, kind of is, but um, I'll stop doing this when I actually get to There we go. We've got a little cavern here. So you can see there's loads of these caverns. Um, normally we've got like swag in them. This one seems rather sucky. Um, you can see there's wood there. Wood's really scarce in this, obviously. Uh, what's that? Is that diamond? Yeah, it's diamond. That's crazy. So you can see there's like uh, loads of uh, gems and stuff in the Terra. I don't know why. Je Terra loves them gems. There's a spike there. The spikes are really annoying in this. Like, they can just randomly kill you. Well, not kill you, but they can hurt you, man. Uh, some water here. It's just really awesome. It's a lot of balls with loads of balls of stuff. And stuff. And it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's probably one of my favorite ones. I'd recommend it if you were going to play through it. That's pretty much it for Tara, so it's just a massive ball. If you want massive balls, play this this map generation, okay? I'm gonna go up to left quickly and then I'll stop this one. See if there's anything special here. So you can see there's some cobwebs there. Looks pretty cool. Didn't see it so myself. Some ash there. Oh, it's not ash, it's silt, isn't it? Yeah, so. Um it's a bit more up here, there's just massive caverns and stuff. I haven't found any chest, but trust me, there is chests in here. I don't know why I can't find any, so there's a lot of chests in here as well. But anyway, on to the next. Okay, so this one is Square Terra. It's similar to the you know, Square Planet Terra. It's exactly the same. It's normal Terra, but it's Square. There's not really anything to say about it. It's a Square. Square world. It's not like the Terra Square or anything like that. It's just Square. If you for some reason want to change the dimensions, there you go. Because you can't actually you know, make it like a large Terra or anything like that. It's always exactly the same size. It's just a massive ball. And one thing to say about this one, um, I kind of forgot about it, but it is indeed just... Um, Terra, there's no planetoids at all in this map, it's just for Terra on its own. And the ball pretty much takes up the entire map because it's a pretty big ball. As normal for his corruption caverns and stuff along the side. In fact, I'm actually going to show you guys one because I'm not going to tear it right now because I've just got eyes with genius and there's a corruption cavern just to my left. So I'm going to go to it. It's just down here a bit. Right at the start of here. Here it is. So you can see, this is a corruption cavern. It's kind of similar to normal ones, but obviously it goes, it goes like in the way that kind of angles. You can see, this is like this side. Oh god, wow! Holy shit! Oh, it looks like that's bugged. Yeah, that's bugged. Because it's on the corner. Oh god, I'm so low HP. You can see, it's just got some stuff there. Some hearts and musket balls. I'm actually probably going to die, which isn't good. But you can see, it's got a ball and everything. So it's, you can do like pretty much a normal let's play here, but... Like an even better one, a swagtastic one. It's got the awesome chest, so it's got the, a bit of randomness in it, but you know, everyone looks like some randomness. You can see some copper there and stuff like that, which you might not have seen earlier. So, now I guess I'm pretty much done for the actual generations. I'm just going to be showing you guys my extras. So, if you want to you know, see some extras, then stick around because extras are pretty cool, guys. I love them. Okay, so just as a little thing to say before I get into these extras, I am going to be using small planetoids for all of these just to save me time. I don't need to generate a massive map just so I can show you what exactly we do. So as expected, it is, you know, I'm at the top of the map here, you can see because I'm low gravity, and it's just all backdrop, so it's pretty cool. Um, I guess it makes the whole scarce wood thing even worse, because you can't find anything, you can't get any wood. Obviously there's wood there, but if you don't really try to get wood, then you're kind of going to die. Holy shit. It's kind of bugged here, you can see here, but who the hell cares? It's only one pixel, man. I'm not sure if the entire thing's low gravity, but you can see it's low gravity right here. There seems to be a lot of low gravs. This is a small, a small one. It looks like all of it's low gravity, in fact, which is, yeah, all of it's low gravity, which is a bit weird. But I guess maybe this is the only way you can do it. As you can see, that's pretty much it. I think I'm low gravity. I don't have a buff, no. So 
That is the sun unticked, so it just makes it so everywhere is dark, and of course you do need torches. Holy shit, it's taking a long time. So, um, next up, I'm not sure if I've seen the next one, but I'm going to be doing Atlantis, because I like Atlantis. Okay, so this is Atlantis, as you can see, Settling Liquids, it's a pretty cool game. It's probably going to take us quite a while, but um, I'm not going to be able to do this one quite long, for quite long, because I'm going to drown, which is a bit awkward, but it'll be fine. And um, once, once time liquids have settled, I'll, I'll bring it back and I'll show you. I mean, it's not really going to be anything special, it's just everywhere's watery. I don't even know how you survive it, in fact. How do you survive in Atlantis, unless you've just used mer folk? Nep Neptune Shell, that's what it's called. I don't even know. Um, unless it doesn't now, I'll bring it back when it liquid defies. Yeah, I'll bring it back when it li liquid defies, okay? Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm back and I finally got the Atlantis working. Well, not I was broke, it was just taking a long time. Um, so it's not what I expected it was. So basically, in the middle of a spawn, there's a massive glass sphere which kind of protects it from the water. And then there's water literally everywhere else. All the planets like don't have pla uh, water in them. Of course, there's a chance that planets do have water in them if it's just a normal water planet. But it's pretty damn weird. You can see it's still lagging a bit and it's still getting the water. It's probably going to make sure. Explode. Yeah, it's still like it's still lagging a bit, bit, you can see, but it's pretty much the same as normal, except everywhere is watery as hell. I guess it would be fun to play with Neptune Shell, and that's probably what it was designed to do, but unfortunately, I do not have a Neptune Shell, but it is pretty awesome, as you can see. I'll see if I can actually find a planetoid. So, will be planetoids above the um, water level, but I'm, oh god, let the water hit the floor. That's a water settling right there, so you can see there's some planetoids normally on the surface like that, but. All of it would be, you know, just underwater, which is pretty awesome. You know, get the glow sticks out, get the Neptune sh shell out, and you're ready to go. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. I've got no no idea what's next. In fact, I'm going to cover without a merchant tick, so you guys can see the difference. <laughs> okay, so this is it without a merchant tick, and as you can see, there's no merchant. Amazing! Okay, so this one is less loot. I know it's self-explanatory, but I'm going to show you guys anyway, just in case you get really confused. Like, what does less lo loot mean, Lewis? I'll show you. And probably not be able to do it too well because I'd imagine I'll, I'll, I'll have like mega good luck and they'll have lots of loot in, in it. Let me see. So, basically, you can see it's absolute shit. So, if you don't want to get MLG stuff, just turn on less loot and you can get like a mediocre kind of uh, thing. Of course, you still get things when you get like really good luck and stuff, but most of it, you know, in general, just be complete crap. See, was more. Oh, wow, that's pretty good dynamite. But in, in general, just be lots of crap stuff, basically. Not as much amazing stuff. It'd still be amazing stuff, but. It wouldn't be anywhere near as frequent, basically. I don't think there's anything in this one. Oh, well, uh, we'll never. Oh, no, there is something in there. I need to find out. One second. But oh, that was stupid. Okay, I'm sure you get the idea. Next up is hard mode. What could what could that possibly mean? Well, we're gonna find out. Okay, so you may be a bit confused right here by the spikes, like a, a, a ball, the massive ball that's got spikes on outside. Is that what hard mode means? No. That's, that's what I thought maybe. Maybe it just makes the generation harder, but no. It is hard mode. I can't find any hard mode enemies to... Ooh. Yeah, you can see here, it's a giant bat, guys. That's that's a hard mode enemy, so that's pretty much it. Hard mode, yeah. And next is mirrored. Yeah, mirrored. Everyone loves mirrored. Okay, so we are on the mirrored um, planetoids right here. So you can see, um, I'm just going to be proving a point, basically. The, the loot is actually mirrored. It's a bit weird. The chest placement isn't. Well, it is mirrored, but it's like a bit weird. You can see right here, this is a shadow chest on the left side. I'm just to the left of the center, as you can see right here. I'm just to the left of the center, so I'm going to go right to the center. You can see it was, um, you know, a little circle with a, a blue mushroom farm thing just above it. So I'm just going to go on the same side here, just to prove that it is indeed mirrored. And I'll also open up this one, so I'm going to show you the loot in here. So this one right here, you can see it's a gold chest. But it's got exactly the same loot in it. It doesn't really make any sense. But basically, the loot is mirrored, but the chest placement is a bit weird. And you can see the shadow chest was actually in the middle, but this one's a bit right. It's a bit weird, but that's actually the end of our magical tours, I'm afraid to say. So um, I hope you guys did find it informational and enjoyable. Oh, God. Get my thing back on. Um, yeah, I highly recommend playing it. If you are going to play it, I've never really played Terra at the end. Maybe try out Terra. Maybe try out large planetoids. I'm, I'm not sure about Atlantis. It's a bit weird, but I mean, if you get bored of us, then sure, I go for Atlantis. Try it out. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. Just just try it out. It's, it's as simple as that. I think it's a lot of fun. We've had fun with it. Uh, we did a Let's Play on Planetoids, if you haven't seen it already. But that's it. So, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you to Berserker66 for making Omnimod. 
Omni-Nod's... Om Omni... Omni... Omni Tool. It's not called Omni-Mod. What the shit is Omni-Mod? Omni Tool. So thanks a lot. Um, you found the video useful or informative? Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you've got any questions about the tool, you should probably just leave it in the comment section below, even though I probably won't be able to answer it. Um, well, maybe if it's non-technical and stuff, like, how do I download? I'll be able to answer that question. There's a download link in the description. There'll be all the stuff in the description, so just check out that. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. I hope you find it fun, blah, blah, blah. Bye.